Welcome back to Anderson Acres. We're here in the kitchen again today and today we're going to be making butterhorn crescents. Now this is what you make when you want a croissant but you don't have the time. So these are kind of like croissants in that they're rolled up like a croissant but they do not quite do the same thing. They don't taste quite the same. They taste like butter but croissants have all those flaky layers from all the folding with the layers of butter and dough whereas butterhorn crescents do not. Okay, so they are not quite a croissant. They don't have quite the same texture or quite the same volume, but in a pinch, they'll do. So let's get started. We are going to start with one cup of milk, and that's gonna go right in our bread maker. Okay, we are going to use our bread maker. You can, of course, make this by hand or using your mixer if you like. It doesn't matter. We're just making the dough. You also want one egg. You want one teaspoon of salt. Any salt will work. I'm using just a table salt. Himalayan or sea salt will work just as well. Now you're gonna want three tablespoons of sugar because this is a sweeter dough and we are trying to approximate some of the flavor of a croissant. So a little more sugar gives them a little bit more volume and kind of sweetens it up a little bit. You're also gonna want three cups of flour red flour or all-purpose, whatever you normally use to make a good white bread. And then finally, one heaping teaspoon of yeast. I'm using bread machine yeast because I'm using my bread machine. You can use traditional or quick rise depending on how you're making your bread. So we're going to pop this in the bread maker where it will, it will mix it, knead it, and do our first rise for us. So that's what you need to do with this dough. It needs to be mixed, kneaded, and then let uh, left alone for about an hour for its first rise. In my case, it'll take 90 minutes in my bread maker to come out with the dough we can work with. So we'll come back as soon as we have a workable dough. I actually forgot an ingredient. I was about to walk away. So <laughs> we also want about a quarter cup of butter. You can use margarine if you like. It works better with butter. So I do recommend butter, but if you have to, use margarine. Now we're ready to pop it in the bread maker and we'll come back in an hour and a half again when we have a workable dough. All right, so now we have our dough. It has been rising and it has completed its first rise. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna kind of stretch it a bit and now we're gonna roll it into a nice big circle. So start by pressing it with your hands because it's just easier to start that way and get it into a decent sized circle. And you're going to want to go to, oh, 15, 16 inches across. Okay, so just take your rolling pin. I'm, I'm using my adjustable rolling pin, but I've removed all the circles from it so I can work freely. So, yes, these adjustable rolling pins, I've had people ask, well, what if you don't want the rings on? You just take them off. It's not a big deal. So we're just going to... Roll this out to a nice, decently sized circle, 15, 16 inches, something like that. There we go. And then once you have it kind of rolled out, you're going to want to use your hands. Like, this isn't a perfect circle. It doesn't need to be perfect, but use your hands to kind of adjust it. Okay? So that you have a decent circle going on. Now you're going to need some butter. Okay, so we have butter. What we want is we want probably ooh, a good quarter cup to a half cup, depending on how much butter you want. So get yourself a bunch of butter. Okay, quarter cup at least. All right, here we go, butter. Butter makes it better. And we're gonna take our butter. We're just gonna kind of, my butter's not super soft because it's kind of cold in here. So we're just gonna kind of soften it with our fingers. Okay, soften it up with your fingers if it's not soft enough. There we go, nice and soft. Just kind of break it up with your fingers. And now we're just gonna use our hands, you can use a knife if you'd rather, but I'm really just gonna use my hands to just kind of coat my circle in butter. Okay, remember these are butterhorn crescents not actual croissants, so we're not going to be able to get the same layering effect. It's just not going to happen. But we're still going to be able to get some butter happening. So 
smooth out that butter, mostly. I mean, it can still be kind of clumpy. It's not really that big a deal. But you don't want it, like, sitting in huge chunks everywhere. So just get that butter going. Smooth it around your circle. Okay. Okay, so it's got to look pretty decent. Okay. So I'm not even going to wash my hands here because I'm just going to end up rolling them up, uh, cutting and rolling this anyway. So my hands are going to get all buttery all over again. So buttery hands. There we go. We'll wash our hands after. Because that's why we have soap. Okay. Get yourself a pizza cutter. I really like this one because it gives you a lot of control. Okay, this is a good pizza cutter. If you want uh, links to like this mat, this rolling pin, and this... Uh, Pizza cutter, take a look in the description. This pizza cutter I like because I can really control exactly where it goes. So we're gonna cut it. And how many times we're gonna cut it really depends on how big you want your butterhorn crescent. So I'm gonna make fairly large ones because we're gonna use sandwiches. So you could divide it again to give them 16, but I'm only gonna do eight because we're gonna make sandwiches out of these. So then you grab your corners, and just pull and stretch as you go. Okay, don't just, push, you want to stretch it. Okay, and once you have that, you can curve it and place it on your pan. And then just continue doing that. Okay, just keep pulling. You want to make sure you're pulling on the dough. So you don't just want to roll it up, you're pulling and rolling at the same time. Okay, and we're just going to, I'll show you what they look like on the pan just as soon as I'm done. So these are going to have to rise now for, oh, quite a while. Um, you're going to want to leave them for, oh, probably an hour, probably an hour, hour, 20 minutes. You want them to uh, rise enough and that takes time. So we're almost done, and then I'll show you what I do with them just to make sure. Okay, just to make sure that they stay in the shape I want, because I'm, again, I'm making sandwiches. So the worst thing you can do is not give these enough time to rise, okay? You want to make sure they have ample time to rise, so don't rush them. You want to leave them. Again, at least an hour, probably longer, okay? Probably quite a bit longer than that. I just gotta readjust my, there we go. So I'm doing eight. Again, you can do them smaller. You could do eight or 16. So it entirely depends on how big you want them. Okay. So here's my tray. And what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to join the ends just to keep them together. But you can just leave them curved so they're just kind of a crescent. But I want the ends to kind of join together a little bit just because I do want to turn these into sandwiches later. You don't have to. You can just leave them as a curve like this. So you can just leave them like that. But I am joining them together because I very specifically want sandwiches. So some of these might pop and that'll still be fine. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna set this aside to rise again for at least an hour, maybe hour and 20 minutes, depending on exactly how they rise. You want them to double in size. So set them aside somewhere warm, either in your microwave, um, on top of your stove, wherever, somewhere warm, not hot. And then we'll come back and we'll bake them up. All right, so these have completed their rise. They look nice and big. Remember, you wanna wait until they're double in size. Once they have doubled in size, we're not gonna do anything else to them. We're just gonna stick them in the oven at 375 degrees Fahrenheit, preheat your oven, and we wanna make sure we bake them for 20 to 25 minutes. 20 minutes if you like a lighter colored butterhorn crescent, uh, closer to 25 if you want something a little bit darker. I tend to go about 23. So we'll go back, come back as soon as they are baked. And there we go. Beautiful butterhorn crescents. I know they look like croissants. However, they are not. They do not have those layers 
that a croissant would have. Now you may occasionally have one that pops like so. That's not really a big deal. It'll still taste delicious. If you want to prevent this popping, you just make sure that this is all the way tucked under, all the way rolled, pretty close to the back. I didn't do that with this one. He was a little bit too close to the front, so he popped when he baked. So we'll just use this guy to rip into it, and I'll show you it doesn't have the layers. So you'll notice it does not have the layers of a true croissant. That's too bad, but they're delicious anyway, and they're so much faster than a croissant. So give this a shot if you don't want to spend all day making croissants, but you do want to make something similar. They're still really buttery, still taste excellent, and they make a very fun dinner roll. That's about it for us here today at Anderson Acres. I hope you enjoyed making Butterhorn Crescents. Give this a go at home. Everyone will enjoy it, I promise. We'll see you tomorrow.